You're watching Sky News. In just a moment, the press preview. Our first look at what's on the front pages as they arrive. First, though, our top stories here this evening. And the Prime Minister has announced that he wants to hold a snap general election on the 12th of December. The government needs the support from, of two-thirds of MPs, but Labour's position is unclear. Jeremy Corbyn says he will not support an election until a no-deal Brexit is off the table. And police say the 31 men and eight women who were found dead in a lorry container in Essex yesterday are believed to be Chinese. Hello there, you're watching the press preview, our first look at what's on the front pages as they arrive. Over the next half an hour, we're going to be talking through the headlines with the Observer's chief leader writer, Sonia Soda, and the political journalist, mm. Isabel Oakshot. So welcome back to both of you. Thanks. Haven't been here for too long. It's nice to see you both. Uh, so let's take a look then at what's on the front pages. And the Financial Times leads with Boris Johnson throwing down the gauntlet to Jeremy Corbyn by suggesting a general election on December the 12th. Mr Corbyn, though, says Labour won't vote to allow it unless a no-deal Brexit is taken off the table. The Metro goes with the headline, PM wants Brexmas election, cheekily noting that nativity plays may have to be cancelled so that schools and village halls can be used as polling stations. End this nightmare, Johnson tells Corbyn. That's on the front of The Telegraph, which reports the Prime Minister is offering MPs more time to consider his Brexit bill if they vote in favour of an election. And it's the same lead story in The Eye, which calls it a Christmas election standoff. The Times proclaims Labour in chaos over election bid by Johnson and reports their MPs have been told to abstain on any parliamentary vote. The Guardian quotes Jeremy Corbyn saying, we'll find out tomorrow how long Brexit will be delayed. The Express features several children offering their thanks after the government approved a breakthrough cystic fibrosis drug. And with a nod to the popular quiz, the star brands the BBC pointless after it was reported to have lost younger viewers. So Sonia Soda and Isabel Oakeshott here with me tonight. And uh, awful lot of headlines on the same story. Mm -hmm. And this was the, the announcement today. There's the, the Metro's take that the PM wants a Brexmas election, uh, talking about the date of the 12th of December. But it's not quite that simple, is it? Want it, he might well, but the others don't necessarily want to support it. So the Prime Minister has uh, written a uh, very powerful letter to the leader of the opposition demanding support for an election uh, in December for the first time for decades, I think it is. Do you know what date the last one was? It's something... I think there was a winter election last time in the 70s, and that was in February. Yeah, something like that. 74, I think. Um, and yeah. there was this sort of flurry of excitement at Westminster when this letter came out, and there was a, a feeling that perhaps this was going to happen. The SNP might be behind it. After all, they've been saying that they're desperate for an election as soon as... Uh, no deal is off the table, as has officially Labour. But this evening, it seems that Labour are deeply divided over this. The uh, shadow cabinet uh, seems to be divided. And, you know, Sonia's the expert on this, probably knows more than I do about where everybody stands. I don't think anyone's stands, an expert but... on what the shadow cabinet think, is thinking <laughs> um, at the moment. <laughs> one way or another, it does not look like this is going to be straightforward for the Prime Minister. There's going to be a vote on it on Monday. Um, and it looks anything at all but certain. Well, that's right. And he does need two thirds of the House, doesn't he, to back him, which would mean that he would need a lot of MPs. Um, yeah. And uh, what, what has Jeremy Colbin said so far? He's talked about <laughs> needing no deal off the table if he was ever going to back an election. That's right. And I think there are, there's questions about whether, uh, well, first of all, uh, we haven't got the extension from the EU yet officially. Everyone's expecting it to happen. There are definitely question marks tonight about what the EU is going to give us. Um, there's lots in the EU who are pushing for an extension to the 31st of January, which is what we asked for. But there are now some suggestions tonight that maybe the EU might go for an extension till mid-November. It's then thought if that the, the French want that, for example. The, 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 yeah, absolutely. So that's what Macron's been pushing for behind the scenes. And so Labour is saying, well, we haven't got the extension yet. We don't know what the details are. And we need to see those details before we make a decision about an election. But what really everyone knows is going on behind the scenes is that Labour is completely split on this issue and we can see this uh, tonight in the briefing that's coming out Jeremy Corbyn is saying um, you know we, we know behind the scenes Jeremy Corbyn is really gung-ho about an election actually and he'd like to see one the problem is is that lots of his MPs don't want an election because they're scared about losing and so we've got Jeremy Corbyn saying you know 
wait, we haven't said anything yet, we might still go for an election, essentially. Um, but you've had the uh, Labour chief whip send, uh, send out emails today to MPs saying that they've got to abstain on any fixed term parliament at motion on a general election on Monday. Uh, there are some serious concerns. So for example, if under the fixed term parliament act, um, th there's no date for the election attached to the motion. So there's a concern by Labour that, that, that Boris Johnson could put a motion for a general election on Monday, people vote for it, and then he decides to switch the date after the fact. Um, so th th there are some concerns about that. But, but really what's motivating this, I think, is that a lot of Labour MPs don't want a general election. And very much the same for the SNP. I mean, I've heard an all, all sorts of ludicrous excuses being trotted out today, something about it being a bit too dark to go and vote, you know, I mean, children... Well, Nicholas Sturgeon said, elections should be exercised in letting voters decide, not devices for charlatans to get their way. That's one thing that she said. <sighs> I mean, look, I don't think that any voters are really going to buy into these series of excuses by the part of politicians who are afraid to, to face them, really. I mean, it's quite obvious that there is total paralysis at the moment. Boris Johnson has resorted to threatening via via the usual well, sources that he will actually sort of suspend all parliamentary business effects. Well, yes, and does that make sense? Because after all, his bill did pass the second reading this week, didn't it? And. Uh, does it make sense to suspend all parliamentary business when there's a chance that that, no. that well, look, bill could I go think, through? I think the, the, the significance of that bill being passed, as it were, through second reading, I think has been overstated. The mm, reason it got it. as far as it did, which was only really over the first very basic mm, hurdle, mm. is because a number of politicians, on uh, Remain supporting politicians from various parties, backed that bill with a view to amending it later, using such amendments which were effectively going to wreck the bill. So I don't think we can attach too much significance and any kind of victory to that bill having overcome the first hurdle, because by the time MPs have finished fiddling around with it, it will not bear any resemblance to what the Prime Minister intended. Just a, a quick question. If on Monday Labour decides not to back him in, in pu pushing for this election, he has said that he will park this bill and won't be discussing it. Does that fit with his narrative that Parliament is, is blocking Brexit? No, I don't think it does. And I think there's in, an inconsistency. You know, I actually happen to agree with Isabel that um, it's really easy to overstate the significance of the bill getting voted through on a second reading, because all it's... It, it, all that's happening is MPs are saying we want this to be discussed, not that we necessarily like this version. So I think it's easy to get too hung up on that. But, but the government is trying to say, we've got this bill passed. We've got the votes for it. That is what the second reading was. But then they're also saying, but we're going to we're, we're going to part this bill and we're going to go on strike effectively. It was, is what Boris Johnson is threatening. You know, I'm not going to put any legislation uh, before Parliament apart from the really really essential stuff. So, it's you know, I, I do think Labour is in a bit of a quandary here, though, and I think actually all MPs are in some ways well, because yes, I mean, absolutely you, you, Tories you just, as well. You, you know, there are plenty yeah. in the Tory party that are pretty worried but, about an election taking yeah. place before we're out. A lot of them are going to face a threat to their seats. I think that's right, and, and for MPs, they're sort of thinking about the political strategy and when is it best to have a, a general election from our party political them, perspectives. Yeah. But then you've got to take a step back from this and sort of, you know, on principle, we've got a parliament that's gridlocked. I really don't think Boris Johnson has got a very good chance of getting his deal through at all. Um, I think there are lots of MPs who will switch away from it. Yeah. He might do as more time gets on, but I don't think he's got a very good chance of it. Parliament is gridlocked. You've either got to have another referendum or a general election. I'm in favour of a referendum. I don't think the numbers are there. I mean, Parliament okay. can't just sit there. So it's, it's, it's really, it's tricky. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure. Sure. I'm just going to, so they, can. Then. they can oh. just sit there. I'm just going to bring in some of the papers because I realise we haven't moved on. So let's take a look at the Telegraph, for example. We'll rattle through a couple because they say, end this nightmare, Johnson tells Corbyn. And in fact, it's, it's notable, isn't it, that a lot of the front pages go with very similar angles. Mm, um, yeah. The I um, calls it a Christmas election standoff is their take on it. So take me through what will happen if Labour do come down on the side of, of saying no to this election. Election. Boris Johnson is saying, well, I'm parking the yeah. WAB, as it's known, the, yeah. the bill. So he's, what he's happens got, then? Well, he's got a couple of options, non, neither of which are particularly appealing. He could put forward a so-called notwithstanding bill, which says, look, we know there's a fixed-term parliament act, which means in theory we need two-thirds of people in this parliament to back an election. But actually, here's my bill that says 
notwithstanding that act, I would like to have an election on such and such a date, and please can you all back it? The problem with that is it's amendable, mm. so that he might lose control of when the election would be, and even if there might be some other things attached to it, like we want 16 and 17-year-olds to be able to vote in that election, which would probably play into Labour hands, or even that I think we could possibly attach some kind of confirmatory referendum. Yeah. Into yeah, that. So he doesn't want to do that. that. He could also call a no confidence motion in himself, not very appealing at all. And not again, I, I don't quite know. But does that, know, that puts Jeremy Corbyn actually, in a difficult position, doesn't it? it, it well, it, it does, but the problem is, is that even if Parliament votes in a vote of no confidence, there's a 14-day cooling off period to see if somebody else can come in, and only then does the general election start. So I think we're too late for that to happen and to have a 14 day cooling off period and still be able to squeeze in a general election kind of on a, one of the first few there days There is one Christmas. thing that could potentially solve this, although certainly not in a way that I and Brexiteers would like. What if Jeremy Corbyn agreed to step aside? He's been very reluctant to do this so that the uh, coalition of Remain supporting parties, so Lib Dems, SNP and Remain supporting Labour at this point, could agree a kind of caretaker leader after a vote of no confidence in the Prime Minister. I mean, that would, that that is, would solve it. It's uh, theoretically saying, possible. I just, think, yeah, I just think the politics of that aren't going to work. It's not going to sustain. Think, I think there's I mean, too much um, division amongst the opposition parties about what they all want in terms of timing of a general election. And of course, the, the other element is we're all waiting to get the EU's, EU's response right. to yes. Boris Johnson's right. request yes. for, for an extension, which he was forced to do under, under the Ben Act. They must be now watching, thinking, oh, the, the situation has changed. Really this call for a general election they, changes their decision, They don't does it? want to be seen to be meddling in no. uh, UK domestic politics. And there was a lot of excitement today. I think the French... Um, uh, ambassador was seen going into number 10. There was a bit of excitement about whether is there any way that France could block this? There's also been quite a lot of speculation around the role of Hungary. A lot of lobbying going on behind the scenes uh, of because the Hungarians a, a to extension. veto. Yeah, well, a short, yeah, a short extension would absolutely play into Boris Johnson's hands because, I mean, if it was, say, uh, a, a, an extension to mid, the middle of November or the end of November, I mean, there just isn't time for a general election. So that essentially recreates, you know, we have the Ben Act, yeah. Boris Johnson has asked for an extension, it recreates the cliff edge. And I think in this parliament, a, a no deal cliff edge, I think it's absolutely the wrong way to sort of strong arm something through parliament. But Boris Johnson knows that is his best way of but getting an extension, something through parliament. But a shorter extension would have to come with a completely convincing line from the EU that said that was it. You know, you couldn't, I don't see the point of an extension. And I don't think they'll do that because they will see that as coming down on one side or the other in British politics. Like, I think the reason why they're thinking about the 31st January extension is it's seen as the most neutral, neutral. option. It's what we've, we've requested, the UK government has requested. So, it's just them acceding to that, okay. that request. So there's still so many questions. The EU may Huge wait to see what happens on Monday. Jeremy Corbyn saying he's waiting for the EU. Situation. Exactly. So um, watch and learn, I guess, over the next few days. Very quickly, we've only got about a minute, but I wonder if we can take in uh, one more story related to Brexit. This is in the Metro that you spotted. Um, the headline is extraordinary. Both sides say violence is worth it for the right result. Uh, I'm so we not think sure. this is rubbish. Yeah, I, we think it's absolutely okay. rubbish, this study. I've, I've, I've sort of I had a look at um, the survey itself and kind of some of the questions and it's it's not the case that people responding to the survey were saying that um, violence is worth it or a pri price worth paying. The question was actually about kind of risk of violence and there wasn't an option for people to respond to that question saying that actually they don't think there would be a risk of violence if a certain outcome happened. So I think it's, it's very sensationalist and I have real doubts about whether these sorts of polls should be put into the public domain without um, kind of looking in depth at some of those questions. Okay. Good. Let's move on then, shall we? And we'll take a break, actually. And uh, plenty more coming up, though, after the break, including driverless taxis are here. But are you brave enough to hail one? We'll have more on that after the break. in the press preview. With me tonight, Sonia Soda and Isabel Oakeshott. Um, and we're going to turn to um, 
The other big story, of course, this week, mm -hmm. and the discovery of uh, the appalling discovery of, of 39 um, bodies inside this container in a lorry, and it continues, obviously, to make headlines because there's still so many questions about it. It is just such a horrific story, and when the news broke, I'm sure lots of viewers would have just heard about it, and it just kind of sends a chill through you. And there's more details that have emerged in the last kind of 24 hours or so. Um, some horrible details about the conditions uh, these people may have been in. Um, uh, people are reporting that they might have been in, in conditions of minus 25 degrees centigrade for like up to 10 hours. So, you know, they might have died of hypothermia. It's just horrible um, thinking about it, really. But there's also more that has um, emerged about um, who might who was driving the lorry, um, you know, how the ambulance was called, uh, potential links with organised crime in Northern Ireland, in Belfast. This was a lorry that came from Bulgaria, from a Black Sea resort called Varna. And um, there are links between organised crime in Ireland and... Um, uh, 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 these areas in Bulgaria, that these are kind of established trafficking okay. routes. And at this stage, uh, that's that all allegations and just people. investigations yes. into whether those yes. things are relevant here. And also because the container took a different route to the lorry. Yeah, there's I mean, a very it's a complicated very, very complex kind of yeah. um, route that and very circuitous. And um, you know what I think is quite interesting is the suggestion that the um, poor victims in this case may have paid up to £30,000 each for the benefit of being uh, transported to the UK. Um, and that figure, um, with a bit of variation, is carried in a number of newspapers. Uh, and, you know, it, you, you have to wonder why anyone would pay, anyone who had that kind of money to put down would pay to get to the UK in that way. You would have thought you might just as well come to the UK um, on a holiday and not return because the government finds it very, very difficult to actually detect people who come in here and don't actually, they outstay their visas. But it may well be and probably very likely that they didn't have any documents. You know, these are people that are so disempowered that they've never had passports, for example. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and, and, and as we say, still at this stage, uh, still an awful lot we don't know. So um, yeah, let's let's move on to a story that we uh, promise we talk about, and this is uh, something completely different. This is about uh, driverless taxis, and uh, there's a story inside the Daily Mail about this. Would you? Would you hail one? I. Um, I would if they were, if, if I knew they were you safe. Two safety staff on board. So yeah, well, this one had two safety <laughs> staff on board. I'm sure the like ultimate goal is is they're not hanging around in the in the back of the taxi. Uh, uh, and that's that's the whole reason for it. Um, I mean, there's been they've been testings of, of driverless cars in the US before, but I think this is probably one of the first times it's been tested over here in the UK, and particularly on London roads, which you know yeah, are a little I mean, bit tighter. And tend to be the whole system tends to be better suited apparently to American roads, which are generally wide. Uh, not so well suited to our slightly patchier sat satellite coverage in London, the roads being narrow and busier. This is what uh, is being reported. And it seems this has been very heavily backed by the government. So the developer of these vehicles has had a £12 million government grant. Um, the government seems to be uh, pushing this quite hard. And it's unclear quite why. It doesn't seem to have any obvious environmental benefits, but perhaps this is just part of wanting to be uh, ahead on uh, sort of tech Cutting development. Well, it may be exciting on technology, but, uh, but people's jobs, obviously. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Time. I mean, I think there are potential gains in the future at some point it might be safer you know it might lead to much greater road safety I suppose because you've got computers making these decisions but you know I think taxi drivers may be reading this story um, with a sense of trepidation really because so, there's a lot of people who, who make their living through driving. Indeed okay well Sonia and Isabel we're going to see you again at 11.30 but for the moment thank you. Thank you.